an addendum to the notes I handed up a month ago, I guess. Um, this is not something you need to know for the test, so therefore it's helpful, and I hope you look at it afterwards, but for the time being, until you finish the test, you can just put this away. And when I'm finished with this, handing it out, it's going to take about 30 seconds. We already have a lot of people out there who don't handle anymore. Just because Paul, I just have a couple of things to, to show to you. Okay, I think we can change here, so wherever you put it, it would be okay. Thank you. You know, it was back there a long time ago, they claimed that computers were going to do away with paper. <laughs> <laughs> We use paper to track the errors in the computer. They were getting rid of paper. It didn't work that way. No. Trees have paper. suffered terribly since computers came along. Uh, last month, I intended to show you some ladder line, and I forgot to bring it along. And this was the ladder line I forgot to bring along. So I'm just going to give it to you and you know, let you look at it and seal it. Can well, I take one it of home? the big advantages of that stuff compared <laughs> to coaxial cable is it's much cheaper. And the main thing is it has much, much less loss. So much for that. I've got something interesting to show you here with respect to the handheld. This is a fairly common uh, and fairly <coughs> new two meter transceiver, which has an SMA connector on older ones, uh, for the most part, use VNCs. It's a very good connector, no question about that. It's decidedly better than the VNC, and it's very good for UHF as well. However, one of these antennas, commonly called a rubber ducky, uh, is more of a dummy load than uh, an antenna. And uh, it's quite good enough to uh, get our repeater up to, what, 10 miles, 20 miles maybe? It, it depends on your location. Uh, but um, that's more because the repeater is in a very excellent location, uh, high up and with a very sensitive receiver. It's, it's no particular um, feat for the, uh, the handheld. <coughs> Uh, it's, uh, I don't think any of them have any more than 5 watts output and with a very poor antenna you just can't affect very much. Typically minus it would be much, much better with an antenna like this. And I can use an antenna like this on here, provided I have an adapter, which I do. When I bought this, I bought an adapter. Seems to be in this plastic angle. And it doesn't snap off in the windstorm. Your time is out in the radio. It's <laughs> sealed. You're sitting back to black. And now, mind you, if you if you get an antenna like this with an SMA connector on it, you don't need any adapter. <coughs> but uh, in this case, you do. This adapts me to a BNC, and then I can put an antenna like this on. And this will get you much, much farther. <laughs> There's a little bit of trouble <laughs> in a room like this. Uh, I've done this uh, with a, an older handheld that, that, that had a BNC. I'm not going to do it with this because I think it's quite obvious with this tiny. SMA, you're not going to wave this around very much before the torque down here is going to break this connector off, and that might be the end of your transceiver. However, there's another way you can make very good use. And that is to simply use. Uh, well, an outdoor antenna. After all, there's nothing preventing you from using a transmission line on one of these. And, well, if you're mobile, 
connect this to the vertical antenna on your <coughs> car or truck or whatever. I've done that quite frequently, and it works very well. And I've also connected it to uh, my base antenna at home. So, uh, you know, by connecting a better antenna to something like this, you've got yourself a really worthwhile transmitter. One of my main reasons for having one of these things is for emergency use. And being able to put a better antenna on is a very worthwhile thing. But these things have batteries in them and the batteries run out. One way you can solve this is buy yourself a couple of extra rechargeable batteries. But they're very expensive. And if you're like me, if an emergency comes up, all your batteries are going to be discharged. However, there's a better way. With most of the um, mid-range or better handheld transceivers, you can buy battery packs. Here's one for this. It just uses common AA cells. I bring one of these, stick one of these in my pocket with alkaline cells that are typically good for at least five years. In fact, I think most of them are good for maybe up to about 10. They have a very long shelf life. Take off the night or lithium ion battery pack in this case. Slip this in its place. Snap in place. And we're back in business. That is, we're back in business and put an antenna on the thing. So if you ever intend to do any critical work, emergency work or anything of the sort, it's very well worthwhile to do that because now with this battery pack with uh, AA alkaline cells, uh, for a very, very little cost you can arrange to carry a whole pocket full of those around with you. And uh, if you uh, run down your battery pack, all you need to do is take this off, throw these batteries away, put a new battery pack in, and you're in business as long as your the batteries in your pocket last. But it is a good idea to keep your your rechargeable battery pack uh, up to date. I have a sneaking suspicion that this one is run down. <laughs> So, um, I want to put this one. So, as is so often the case, I'll get myself back in business here. As is so often the case, do as I say, not as I do. And that's all I have to say as a short introduction. On to the questions and whatever. Does anybody have any questions? We're only down to one, two, three, four students. And so this is kind of embarrassing, but uh, we're going to um, put you on the hot spot. <laughs> Holly, I know, I saw you, I saw you writing out lists. You had lists and lists. I ran out. You ran out of lists, mm -hmm. but you have no questions. Oh, probably. Okay. There was one one question. Okay. It, one of the questions said it was a cold described with CC something. What's that used for? And I couldn't find it. Okay. Peter, what's the CCS? We had five letters, I think, in it. I don't know if anyone of you had that question. You know, in the what chapter would that? I be? have no clue. It's the, the uh, continuous, you know, the the use it on uh, oh, CTCSS. CTCSS. There, what's you continue, there you go. Uh, oh, and it's continuous continuous there. Continuous okay, that rings a bell now. CTCSS. Yeah. 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 Continuous. Continuous. Continuous tone. What does it stand for? Something. Uh, CTC coded. Tone coded. Squelch, squelch system. system. Squelch system. Okay. And I forget what, the, what what answer they were looking for, or when is that tone used? I think well, it's that. Alan's going to explain that to you. The uh, tone coded system 
it's basically it's a, it's, a, it's it's the most common uh, system used to uh, eliminate interference or or to selectively receive only the signals that you want to hear on certain frequency. The transmitter and the receiver are set up to, to transmit and respond to only signals on the frequency that are accompanied by a tone okay. that is that is that is you you select mm -hmm. yeah. so it's tone coded. So uh, the first common use of this was for uh, what we call RCCMS systems, radio common carrier mobile radio systems, which are rental repeaters that that uh, are established by businesses where they have multiple uh, people and they build them by time that they use the repeaters. So each, each client is assigned a, a code, there's about 100 and some codes. So out of those 100 and some customers, whenever their radio key kicks in, it's programmed to admit that tone. The billing system locks on and bills that company while they're using the repeater. That's how they use it in, in, the, in the private commercial mm -hmm. industry. Amateurs use it as a convenience because what happens is you have repeaters and there's all these other different sources of noise and interference that will occasionally come in and, and break the squelch and, and bother the receiver. So people that are monitoring the repeater system, they like a nice quiet home until they hear the signal they want, they want to listen to buzz, scrackle, inner mods and all the rest of it. So they, they enable this CTCS system and the repeater is set up to do it as well. So only stations that go through the repeater will be retransmitted with the proper tone by the repeater transmitter, and only radio <coughs> radios will be tuned to only receive properly coded transmissions. Therefore, they will only hear what they want to hear. Also, another reason it's done is, 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 is you might have two repeaters, and they might be operating in a fringe area. So <coughs> if you open the squelch on both of them, they can hear the transmissions of both systems. Very irritating, no problem. If they're far enough away and it's just an irritation kind of thing, the local <coughs> signals will always be overridden, will always override the weaker signals because of the FM uh, capture effect. So if they both have a different tone, neither system will need to be aware of the other one operating on the same frequency at the same time. Now, uh, Ken, you have your uh, Bofang set to listen to uh, the club repeater. Uh, 146940. Yeah. Okay, on the Bofang, there's all the option, uh, all of the two meter, um, you know, transceivers will have, when you when you program them, they'll have the option to put the tone in. Yeah. See, so, so if you wanted to transmit, uh, which you can't do now legally, but if you want, eventually want to transmit, you will have to put the tone in of 107.2. Is that correct? 107.2? Sounds right to me. Yeah. And and then <coughs> when you transmit, that tone will also be transmitted. You won't hear it. Yeah. The tone will be transmitted, and it'll open up the receiver to retransmission. Otherwise, you won't be able to use the repeater because yep. the repeater is locked. Uh, I understand. Yeah. It's all. Yeah. There's another reason for that too. The reason the repeater transmitter is locked that way is because we don't want the repeater repeating the noise that's on the frequency either. Yeah. No point in being retransmitted on another frequency. Yeah. It's yeah. irritating enough on the input. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's worthwhile mentioning that the frequency of that tone, they're, they're all very low. They're in the neighborhood of about 100 hertz. And at the level they're normally transmitted, they're not inaudible. Now, we're perfectly capable of hearing uh, 100 hertz, but the, the level has to be quite high uh, for people to hear it. And normally on a uh, a transmission with those tones, the tones are just simply inaudible. Yeah. In other words, they don't bother people. You'd only hear it in a dead carrier if you're really concentrated on a really good, really strong signal and you think it was a fan or something running in. And if you have very good <coughs> ears, <coughs> yeah. better than mine. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, does that answer your question, Paula? Okay, more questions. Jim has a question. Got his hand up. Questions up like the ones from the bank. Can we get them up? On oh, you want to do? You want to do a well, question? Well, because I got the one on the bank. You can type the number. We can bring it up like the ones that have questions. Where you actually type the number of the question into the website. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Let's sure. do that. Let's bring up the website. Alan I wonder. If, I wonder. If totally prepared. I could probably do all that from there. It's easier. And I can see the screen. Well, uh, you want me to move? I can move. 
see if I'm close enough. Okay, so uh, we need to get onto our uh, Google or uh, where's Google? This one, I guess. Oh. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> Another commercial. Where do we go from here? If you know the site, you can go up to uh, www. You go to a new tab. You can go to keep the old tab or whatever. New tab. There we go. Okay. <coughs> you gonna go to the whole question bank? Well, there's a place you can type individual numbers in and bring the questions out. Oh, okay. During that, during in the breaking yeah. yeah. isn't there? You need to be closer. No, it's in basic yeah. questions. Just placing type in the yeah. number. You were telling me that, yeah. Yeah. So you can, you can bring the. Uh, That's where I have my list. I wrote the question, but I also wrote the B number down. That's right. Yeah. Because you can bring up. Yeah. Exactly. 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 See where you put the question number in. Here, search by question. That's where you put in the question, right there. question ID. You got a question ID yeah. for me? Okay, oh, there you go. What is it? D. 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 Or Bravo, sorry. Yeah. Here. Dash 003. D. Dash 003. Dash 017. Dash 017. Dash 009. Dash 009. Okay, you get it. Okay, so they say here the uh, oh yeah this one. The biggest <laughs> trial voltage drop is 0.5. So if you 10 feet, 10 times 0 0.03 for number D, it would give you 0.3. So I was thinking number 12. But okay, let's okay. take a little bit of okay, let's see it out. 22 amperes on transfer, and you keep, you're talking about the lines you to feed the transfer, the, the power for the for the transfer. The voltage drop on the power. And uh, you don't want to lose any voltage, so manufacturers suggest limiting voltage up to 0.5 volts. Perfect. And the vehicle is three meters away, three meters away. So okay, so you get a loss of uh, three meters, three meters away. You multiply so each of the volts by 10 meters. That's right, yeah. multiply each of them by 10. 10 feet times 0 0.03 volts, be 0.3. Yeah. But 0.5 is acceptable, I thought. So I thought 0.3 would be acceptable. Although it's being an electrician, I know it's 22 amps. You have to, I just know you have to go to number 10 wire. If you go by that question, you, a lot of people I would think would pick number 12. Right? Yeah, yeah, I would pick number 12. But that yeah. number is the, the correct answer is number 10 wire. Uh, answer D. And if you go to electrical code, like uh, electrical mm -hmm. code, actually 22 amps, you have to go to number 10 wire. But it's nothing to do with the voltage, it's more to do with the amperage. So, yeah. so which one is the lowest? The, uh, you could get away with. Uh, I would think number 12, but the answer is number 10 wire, which is answer B. So what does 12 come to? Well, uh, uh, a point zero 0.03 volts times 10 feet would be point 0.3 volts, right? Yeah. And they're saying you're allowed point 0.5 volt drop. This is mm -hmm. limited, limiting voltage drop oh, point okay. 0.5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say they say that you can use what? Number 10? Number 10 is the answer. They want you to use number 10, which I can see why, because I know that being an electrician, you can't, after, after 20 amps, you have to go to number 10 wire. It's good for from 20 to 30 amps, but I don't know how they get that. The, the question is uh, like this is actually I've seen this question before, and oh I don't right. like the question oh right. Right. because yeah. there are practically more than one answer to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I, I really I dispute the answer for that. Right. If anybody gets that question, I guess because if you guys. say you first you're telling them to limit the voltage drop to 0.5, if there's an answer there that's 0.5, yeah, or less, or or less, yeah, it's, it, any one of those should be right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't like the question at all. Yeah, my guess is the answer is number B or at B. Number and, 10 and let's just look at that again. So, so why why would it be B and not uh, say I'm thinking uh, there must be a, must be some kind of a factor you got to multiply by because you're over 20 amps or something. I don't. Know. I, I didn't find that book. See, if you go with D, then uh, 10 times 0 0.03 will be 0.3 volts. Be what? 0.3. 0.3 volts voltage drop. Which is yeah. even better. 
Okay, that's even better. But well, see, they say the they say minimum, don't they say minimum there? It suggests limiting it. Then which five. minimum wire gauge? Minimum. That's the thing that you got to remember. So the cheapest uh, wire that gives you. Number twelve. Cheaper than yeah, number twelve. Is smaller wire than number ten. So that'd be, that would yeah, be minimum. That'd be minimum. That's, yeah, that's that's why I picked it. Number uh, twelve. Is twelve is not smaller. Yeah, yeah number yeah. ten is a bigger wire. Yeah, uh, ten is bigger. Ten is bigger. Ten bigger is bigger. Yeah, yeah, smaller number, bigger wire. Smaller number, yeah. 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 So it should really be D, but it isn't. Yeah. So D yeah. D is <laughs> the cheapest, skinniest <laughs> wire you yeah. get away with. Whatever it is. So I got the answer for you. The Memorize minimum, it. Yeah. Minimum wire gauge. Yeah. Okay, minimum. so so it's gonna be minimum and within. Okay, that's the that's the key. Yeah. yeah. But the minimum and within is twelve. Right. It's number twelve. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked you yeah, to right. to memorize it. You're right. Yeah, so and it did it did show up on the test last time. Uh, I would not say there is anything to memorize here. This is a situation that you are in the field. You improvise. Uh, this is not your regular setup from if home. If I was marking it, I'd accept either one. So if, <coughs> if you are in the field and uh, you don't quite have a wire and you'll find uh, uh, some lengths of wire and you wonder, do I get away with this? And with number 12, yes, you just about get away with it. Number 10 is better, I guess. No, number 10 is better, so if you are at home and you have a steady setup, uh, number 10 is what you read it up with. But if you are in the field on field day and you have to improvise, have to make, pick up something on the spot, then you, you work with what you have. Uh, I believe that is the spirit of the question. Okay. Uh, 22 amps, it draws 22 amps right away, like you said, number 10. Yeah, it should be what electrical code anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that could be why they combine the two parts of the question there. Maybe. Maybe that's what it is. You have to know the electric yeah. code. Okay. Get another one? Mm. Well, let's see. Uh, Submit. Eight. eight. Hey, you gotta go to, uh, oh, you got to give a number there. Yeah. Previous. Oh, hey, here we go. Just say so. Right, you got to even an answer and then you go to next. Or next. Oh. This next question. Where's the... Uh, you go to the next question. But if you submit, does it go back to your block to put in it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, there, there. there it is. Okay, uh, B. Yeah. 001. 017. Mm, okay. 001. This thing's not. It's not helpful. Maybe I'll do it all of it. B. 001. 017. 017. 010. 010. Begin. Which yeah, I thought the, the answer was put in one. Uh, one nine. Should hold the basis of 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 the Sounds good. 160 watts. No, it's got to be WC. Am I right? For B, actually, the manual says 560, so 600 is too much. Yeah. Yeah. So the only one that's legal there is C. Let's see. Because the maximum carrier power is 100. Is, uh, carrier power, right? 100, 100 watts per. per uh, other 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 emissions, I believe, for for basic. For basic. It's 190 watts, I think. That's right. the 190. For for advanced. Yeah, it's got to be C. Yeah, it has to be C. Does it say it is? It has to be C. Oh, you put text in. I think it's. I think it's. Uh, just submit. Yeah. I think oh, it's sort of basic and submit. It. Yeah, but I think can't just be. B can't be B because you only have five. D. 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 Yeah. 160 watts carrier power. Yeah, you have no you might be right, it, maybe it is 190 watts. Oh, is there more power allowed uh, on uh, VHF? Uh, it, hasn't got, it doesn't have anything to do with VHF, it has to do with the mode. Uh, uh, the uh, RVR, oh no, Basic RIC 3, can legally operate uh, full, at full power. section 10.1 states uh, the, uh, the limitations for basic and it talks about uh, maximum uh, PDP and it says uh, maximum of so many watts for any other type of emission, which would be your CW or straight carrier or anything like that. So it's either I think no, you know what I think it's I think it is D. 
Because I believe it's 190 watts. Let's find out. Okay. You you challenge your license right here. Yeah. <laughs> you flunk it. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is 190 watts. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's the magic number. A trick part there that they specify VHS. So, so I'll show you what they're trying to do here. And this, I'll show you how this question is put together, and then you won't never make it. Okay. They're trying to play on, on some of the things you may have memorized. They say 200 watts carrier power. Yeah, I remember 200 watts. No, no, it's 200 watts of DC input. Oh, okay, right See? there. Trying to mix, trying to mix and six, 600 watts PEP. They're playing on you again. That's 560. Five, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. And the 100 watts is typical for an HF transmitter. And you'll think that. In, but the 160 watts is is in between the 100 and the 190. It's not a familiar number. So they're trying to they're trying to play on the numbers and what you might remember. They're trying to trick you. Very sneaky. Sneaky. Yes, they are. Okay. Another one? B001. B001. 015. 015. 008. 008. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's nicely this question. I just used the formula. So I used the uh, wavelength that equals the uh, speed of light over F. But see, my answer would be 15 yeah. megahertz, but they want 14 point. Zero to 14.35. Uh, yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. this question came up last year. I remember it again. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are studying physics, that you obviously divide the propagation velocity by uh, uh, the frequency. Uh, but uh, ham radio bands are just given to us, and uh, they are labeled. So the 20 meter band is a label for 14 megahertz. Right. Yeah. So, so you gotta, you A can't is the. Formula, you got to actually remember that. Yes. B five. would be the correct answer <coughs> in a physics example, right. but in ham radio, uh, uh, the regulation is just a label for the wavelengths, not an actual yes. accurate. It's within. It's within the band. Uh, the, there's only one answer when you, when you do the calculation. There's one frequency you get. Right. But. How much on each side of that is still considered part of, and what is the band? Is it the band, band 16 band. meter, 17 meter? You know, really. Yeah, right. So, um, what you'll sometimes find is that you'll have a 20 meter band allocation for both amateur and for something else, and they'll, and they'll both call their allocation the 20 meter band, but they're not the same. It's a different group of frequencies that is generally it makes, in that makes same it very confusing. Eh? It's, 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 confusing like having, it's like having so your watch yeah. calculation and saying coming up to 600 watts, but it could be 700 or 500. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, so here's the way to remember it for amateur stuff. Just remember the key numbers. 20 meters, 14 megahertz. Okay, so there's 40 meters, easy, 7 megahertz. Yeah. you got a formula sometimes you just plug those numbers and get just to verify your... Oh, verify no, not, not this one. You're, you're uh, gets in the ballpark, but you might actually have a frequency that's not part of the band. Right. I know, I know, because I'm... I know now, but if I did that question yeah. the first time, I would have been thrown off it. Yeah. And that'd be 20 yeah. The helpful fact mm -hmm. is that of the HF bands, all of them start on even numbers with only one exception. That is um, 17 meters. Uh, 1800, exactly. Uh, exactly 7 megahertz for the 40 meter band. Exactly 14, that's where this question is. Yeah. For the 20 meter band, exactly 21 megahertz for the 15 meter band, and exactly 28 megahertz for the 10 meter band. The upper ends are all sort of scattered all over the place. And the lower too, 125. And the, the exception I mentioned is the 80 meter band, which starts at three and a half. And it might be helpful to remember that that's exactly half of seven. In the 60 and, and the 160 meter band at 125. Mm -hmm. In the 160 meter band at 160 meters. 160 meters. 125. That's 1.8. It's 1.8. 1.8, sorry. 1.8, exactly. Okay. Again, it's a sort of an even number yeah. opposed to being, say, 18.5 or. Yeah, I never, I've never run on this. I probably never run.
you got to build one of Peter's antennas. Okay, got another one? Okay, uh, B, Bravo. Oh, uh, who wants to include another question? Yeah. They're all Bravos. That's true. Who else? Alphas are advanced. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, zero, zero, 005. Zero, zero, 008. Zero, one, one. Okay, good. Yeah, maybe that's not the one. That's well, I used to do DB calculations in general. What's the best? Just a quick formula to get get your DB stuff. Because I'm a little hard time with DB stuff. Oh uh, yeah. No, just, you know, for just a quick formula, you can figure that out. Well, the S nine is, 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 is B is the right answer. Yeah. Thirty decibels corresponds to one thousand times uh, over. So something that's one thousand times stronger. 30 right. decibel uh, over S9, you are 1,000 times stronger than an S9 signal. So to reduce it 1,000 fold, you have to divide your 100 watts by 1,000, so 0.1 watts results. Okay, so because the 30 dB, every 3 dB, 3 dB is double, right? 3 dB is double. Uh, okay, so it's uh, 10 times 3, so that's... Well, because the logarithm of uh, 1,000, 1,000 has 3 zeros, so 10 to the third power. So the formula is 10 times log of 1000. Therefore, log of 1000 is 3, 10 times 3, 30. So if you are over something by 30 decibels, then you are over something 1000 times. And see, if, if you are done to your last dollar, and then suddenly you win the lottery, and you have a thousand dollar check mailed to you, so your wealth went up by 30 decibels. So it's a ratio, it's not an amount. Uh, this answer is de definitely B. It's, it's 100 milliwatts. Yeah. A point 0.1 watts times 1,000 is the 100 watts. Because yeah. it's a thousand times. Because it's a thousand times over. Yeah. These are good questions. Yeah. Yeah. This this actually made sense. Yeah. It just happens that a change of 10 decibels corresponds to a change of 10 times. Um, the other really, really handy one to remember is the change of three decimals represents a change of well, either a half or a double, depending on which way you're going. And with those two things that you can get a grip on, uh, you can go a long way in you know, figuring out what differences are. 20 right. decibels is 10 decibels twice over, so it's 10 times 10 is 100, and so forth. Another way to look at it is the uh, properly calibrated S meter. Uh, it takes uh, 6 dB to move up each graduation. So 6, six dB increase is 1 S meter. Which is a 4 times power. 4 times power, exactly, or 2 times voltage, because yeah. power is voltage squared times. So a 6 decibel change is 4 times power or 2 times voltage, the one and the same thing. In the book here, two times the voltage and four times the power. Or four times the power. If you say either one, you said the same thing. Two mm -hmm. times the voltage is four times the power. Okay. Another one. Okay. Uh, ten, ten question. This one, Bruce. I better get it, eh? Yeah. Here's my license again. <laughs> uh, zero, zero, six. Zero one one zero zero three. Was that a two or a three? A three. A three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How are you? What's it? A good calculation just to what's the formula so, so um, oh, this is simple uh, all the Yagi antennas whatsoever the elements are about half of wavelength. So you go for half right. of, no. of uh, uh, the wavelength for 21 megahertz, which is 15 meters. 21 megahertz is the 15 meters band. So yes. the Yagi elements would be seven and a half meters. So do they have a 6.4 meters is the closest. Close enough. Yeah. Okay. But that's not the way that uh, that you would have learned this. 
But that's that's the way it is. Uh, a, a Yagi is a half half wavelength. The director is shorter and the reflector is longer. Yeah. And what's the so wavelength for twenty one megahertz? Uh, you could also apply the formula. That's right. what they're doing. Yeah. Here, here you can apply the formula. The formula. Yeah. 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 So you, you got but you can but you can once you get once you understand the formula you can reason it out like this. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So you have to work out the wavelengths for 21 megahertz and then half the wavelengths and whichever number is closest to that half wavelength, <laughs> that's the right answer. Right. So it's not going to be dead on? It's, it's no, it's not, not going to be that dead on. Which is what I always, which I always hated about these questions. Yeah, yeah, you give or take. Yeah, See, right on. Right. If you have a Yagi yeah. antenna, the driven element is right on, dead on. But they did not ask for the driven element, they asked for the director. So you have to know several things here. You, one thing you know that the director <coughs> is the shortest element, right. uh, shorter than the driven. So uh, the director is some number that's somewhat shorter than half of wavelength. Exactly. And right. The uh, other question is, well, uh, that what's, what's the wavelength? Well, the wavelength is 300 divided by 21.1. And you get the wavelengths. Then you have that, and then you say, "Well, no, I have half the wavelengths, and because it's a director, it's even shorter than half of a wavelength." And then 6.4 is the closest number. Some of the numbers are even close. Yeah, yeah. It's even close. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. You didn't have to answer it. See. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think that's it for me. Any others? My name's Jim. Okay. Any concepts or anything that then? Uh, I, I, I found the section that I was getting the lowest marks on after doing the hundred random one was typically on propagation and antenna. So I know that the other guys were in that. It is a it, it's it's a different kind of learning curve. It's uh, propagation and antennas, and that's something that is normally part of the average person's lifestyle. So this it is a new element that you have to really yeah. climatize yourself to. Any questions about modulation, transmitters, receivers, and such? Trying to memorize and draw diagrams there and putting that all in. Well. Uh, Didn't we have a question on modulation uh, in the last um, the last uh, review period? Yeah, I forget what it was. What was that question? Uh, was that something about flat topping? Look at that. Uh, I started a, a practice exam and look at the first question. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is beans. B is the answer. Oh, B is yeah. the answer. Yes. You just said the shortest element is the shortest element. Driven element would be right. That's a good question. Uh, yeah. Longest yeah. element yeah. is the reflector. Who's what? No, so no, the the uh, modulator and the mixer. The is oh, there you go. In the. Um, okay, was it the CW? I, I have an answer for this. Uh, uh, modulators and mixers, they do the same mathematical yeah, process, that is multiplication, yes. and multiplication uh, in uh, the time domain would produce addition and subtraction in the frequency domain. But there are other words, other English words that they describe multiplication, such as beat, beating. Yeah. You can beat two frequencies, and the third word is mix frequencies. So when you modulate mix and beat, you do the same mathematics. So where there is a difference is that we most often use the word yeah. modulation yeah. when the yeah. two frequencies are way different, such as audio to a several megahertz carrier. You have a one kilohertz audio and you have a 28 megahertz carrier. Yeah. When the two are combined, that's modulation. But when you receive 28 okay. megahertz and you combine yeah, that with uh, yeah. 27.4 megahertz for yeah. local yeah. oscillator, yeah. then you mix yeah. because they, when they are very close to each other, you mix them. Yeah. When they are way different, then you, you, you modulate uh, the high frequency with the low frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mix and beat are very similar. You, you beat two different signals when they are close in the frequency and the small difference results. Yeah. 
So modulation is really strictly only used when there is one frequency of way too low, like voice, and one frequency of way too high, like for VHF carrier or something. That's so modulation. Modulation doesn't necessarily refer to voice. I always assumed it was voice. Not necessarily. It could no. be picture. You, you you have modulation in the television transmission. Oh, right, well. right. Okay. And for that, uh, television transmission is amplitude modulation for the picture. Okay. Frequency modulation for uh, for the voice. Okay. So modulation is for voice, for picture, for slow scan TV. And technically, again, mathematically treated Morse code has uh, a modulation in it. Morse code is yeah, because you create a very low frequency uh, yes, angular right. wave. Yes, and then you put that on the top of a carrier, so that's modulation. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you modulate something, you make changes to it. To change it. Yes. Yeah. All digital modes involve around. modulation because in digital modes you have audio frequency tones and you put those tones yeah. uh, up the top of a carrier yes. uh, and they eliminate a sideband, so that's again so modulation. modulation. Okay. Anytime you put intelligence on, on a carrier, you're modulating it. That is because intelligence suggests that that's low frequency. So, indeed, another way to say modulation is when intelligence is impressed upon a carrier. That's modulation. And as it says in the book, some intelligence is not very intelligent. Yes, yeah, some intelligence is less intelligent than others. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <well>. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, you had a question. Brad, I, I saw your arms up there. So. Oh, I'm just loosening uh, up my shoulders. <laughs> You're just stretching. Putting up some LED lights there today. <laughs> Anybody want to take a crack at this one? Oh, what is this? Oh, there you go. What would you use to connect a quadruple cable? So right away you got to call So right away you got to We call it a peak <laughs> Oh, if, if the question is that how, how do you get away with this setup, then the answer is C. Yeah. 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 It's it's if you have a yeah. mismatched impedance, yeah. we you use that matching yeah. device. Yeah. Matching yeah. device. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. Right. Yeah, actually, yeah. put the answer in the question. Isn't yeah. it? Eh? Right. No, I just re re I reworded it that way. It's, it's mismatched. <laughs> okay, go for it. Oh. Why would you use a triode vacuum tube instead of a transistor? Everybody knows what a triode is? I'd say. Three elements. Why is why is B wrong? It's <laughs> <laughs> actually no, no, the opposite. Think about it. Why is B wrong? We're talking about a trial here. Uh, C is technically correct, but they probably want to hear A. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be yeah. A. Yeah. But I just I just want to right. point something out. Okay. Why is B so terribly wrong? Yeah, so he's he's you need high voltage oh, to make it to what? Yeah. yeah, high, high voltage. <laughs> and because uh, B is uh, wrong, a high voltage inherently suggests that now you have high voltage, then you need less current. Yeah. So the use of less current is technically true, but that's just a technical true answer, uh, not really what they want to hear. Yeah, and, 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 and one and says it can handle higher voltage, the current says it uses less current. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's even two different things right yeah, now. Yeah, different this is wrong yeah, too because there. even though Peter points out that it may draw less current, you're not counting how much current it draws to heat the elements. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, and that's a lot more than the transistor draws. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah. So it's ridiculous. Let's think about it. A lot more than a bunch of transistors. You lost your mouse? I don't like that question because if you set the right rules, you can make almost any one of them the right answer. Well, we won't get into that. <laughs> I want to know how you put a vacuum tube into a board meant for a resistor or a transistor. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're assuming, assuming I, that you're one. I got you, one. So. Remind me to bring it. To, to, to remind me to bring it. Up, bring it here. Yeah. I have one that will fit into a transistor socket. <laughs> <laughs> they're assuming you're an experimenter in your basement, basement and you're building something. You've got all kinds of parts. You're assuming <laughs> What are you going to use for this? 
when you use what you've got, whether it fits or not. Yeah. Yeah. I'll Next. tell you a quick story about solid state devices. Um, this, the transistor was invented by Bell Laboratories in the States. And it came out at a time when everybody had invested everything into vacuum tubes, the newest vacuum tubes and so on, and they were trying to sell vacuum tubes. And they decided that although the transistor was infinitely superior, it, they didn't want to make it available because they could still sell off tubes, the inferior technology. So about that time, they had also had a little bit of a, a foray over there with a couple of nuclear bombs in Japan, and they're feeling kind of sorry for the uh, the uh, recipients, uh, so they gave them the technology to play with. And so the, uh, the Japanese took this technology and they worked on it while the states continued to build tube devices. Along came the space race, and the North Americans wanted to be the first up into the moon, and since all the technology was based on tubes, they wanted to they wanted to get a satellite to get the first satellite up so they they tried and tried and tried using tube technology and near the end of the of that era they started building little micro tubes about this big and even those were not stable enough they couldn't handle the vibration and so on and so forth and then all of a sudden sputnik 1 goes up who made the electronics package the japanese what did they put in them solid state transistors. <laughs> Who developed those? States. How quickly did the economy shift? Very fast. <laughs> oh, well, the other story <laughs> is the Americans sold it to the Japanese and they were trying to figure out what was the price we should sell it for. This is the key to the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. Solid state is the key to the kingdom. Yeah. They sold it to the Japanese for $27,000 US. Technology. The key to the kingdom. Oh. Oh. And they gave it back to them for free, but they <coughs> charged them for all the extra dollars they did. All the stuff they had done with it. Do you think the bells and whistles would be going off? Eh? Yeah, yeah. This is so I happen to have one of those micro tubes at home. I'll have to remember uh, to bring it. It's quite something to see. Anyway, that was your yeah. history lesson. Moving right along. <laughs> Oh, this is another one that's another easy. One. This one? 15 meter band. Come on, guys, what's the magic number for 15 meters? You should know that. Just like that. Straight, straight memory. 21. 21. 21 megahertz. Big 15, 21. So this is another one of those labels. It's not yeah. 30 by 2 would be 15, but uh, 30 by 15 is 20, not 21. It's a round and a boat. The perfect example, if anyone's listened to the HF bands, you'll notice that a certain portion of the 40 meter band, the 7 megahertz to 7.5, you hear broadcast stations in there. Well, in certain countries, that's called the, that section where you hear those broadcasts, they call that the, the, the 40 meter broadcast band. We call that band 40 meter amateur band. Who's right? Yeah. It's a relative term. <laughs> Around and about. Okay, so you have that one, that's easy. 21. Some people say that the North Americans cannot handle the metric system, and that's why those discrepancies are. <laughs> yeah, I can sort of attest to that because I avoided any chance I get. So. <laughs> this should be easy, guys. <laughs> That's pretty simple, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Seems simple, but there's a couple of little gotchas in there to try to catch them. Yeah. First one, sorry guys, you're in trouble, you're dying, don't tell us, you're not allowed to use the radio. That has to be wrong, right? That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> so I can forget that one. Uh, only in severe weather watch. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Eh? Lots of ships sink during the sun, sunny days. So obviously it's A, right? But what's interesting is answer C. Only at specific times 15 and 30 minutes after the hour. There's actually some logic to that. If it catch somebody, if they had any kind of radio experience, 
there actually is a silent period for emergency frequencies where no transmissions are to take place. Uh, and uh, at 15 and 30 minutes after the hour is where you should be listening for possible distress on certain frequencies. You're not allowed to make it anything but it's a distress communication at those points. But that's not really in our in our testing of that, but that's to catch somebody who would think about that. Is that goes on here in the energy band, is that it? No. No, no. It's going commercial, uh, commercial radio. Oh, okay. Yeah, low frequency, uh, what they call uh, MF bands. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that is good idea. You, you hit the just for yeah. There you go. So of course, obviously, life-threatening situation. Yeah. Yeah, I better get weak or what? Well, it's the light is still. I there. think that even extends to the point where you can use any frequency at all. Is it not? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Amazing. like I tell all, all my students, in a life-threatening situation, you throw the rule book out the window. You make the power. Max power. Yeah. That's when power, any frequency you can do. Just be prepared to uh, answer when somebody questions, was it really an emergency? Did you have to go on the local police, police repeater? It helps if you pick a frequency that's got somebody listening. Well, that's the idea. You can use it any power and methods you want. But I did tell you the story about the guy that <coughs> got nailed for that because he, uh, there were two things that nailed him. One, was it wasn't considered an emergency because there were alternative methods of, communica of communication. So there was this amateur radio operator who was out on a highway and there was an accident and he decided to use his amateur radio to call for help. Uh, and the frequency that he decided to use was the local uh, OPP uh, repeater <laughs> frequency. Well, here's the problem. Uh, first of all, there are farmhouses, there are other phones nearby, he could have just drove to the next neighborhood and he could have got assistance that way. That's the first problem. So is it, was it really necessary to use the radio at all? The worst thing that really got him was the fact is, how are you able to do that? In order to have done that, he would have had to have known the sub tone that they use on the repeater that we talked about, and he would have to know the transmit and the receive frequency of the repeater, and he would have to program his radio with all of that information in order to key the mic and actually communicate with the OPP. Mm -hmm. What is he doing with the radio program with those frequencies? <laughs> what was the nature of the emergency? Car accident. Anybody hurt? Yeah. Seriously? Uh, I don't know if they were seriously hurt or not, but it was, it was you know, out in there. Sounds to me like a yeah, questionable if, if, if somebody was really seriously hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like say he had he had the parameters, the frequency was not punched in, but if it would have been like let's say five miles away to the to the house and maybe weather conditions too. I don't know if yeah. that played a factor. No. No, it wasn't. It was a clear day, and, okay. and there was it was right in front of <coughs> another of another person's residence. Were not? Oh, okay. You know, like, like okay. a farmhouse. No, like could they just drive and could they just the ran up the, the 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 and you know banged on the door kind of thing? Oh, yeah. well, they put him in jail. Well, I don't know if they put him in jail, they find him mm -hmm. and they uh, took his other things. Yeah, they took his equipment for yeah. sure. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, this is absolutely straight, so we can go to the next question. Yeah, okay. The transformer is highly efficient. So 6.3 volt. Power in, power yeah. out is all the same. Yeah. 6.3 times 2. Approximately yeah. 13. Approximately. So it's 13? Yeah, approximately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it doesn't? That says approximately. It does not be that. You're right. That's what it should say for all those other yeah. answers. Yeah, Pro approximately. Exactly. Instead yeah. of those stupid numbers, it should say approximate. Mm -hmm. That would fix all of them. <laughs> you got six out of a hundred so far. Okay. At this rate, it'll be midnight before we get through hundred. Oh, here's one for you, Peter. Yes, in a receiver, uh, there's a model between the mixer and the intermediate frequency amplifier. This is that block diagram, but yeah, it's a limiter. Filter? Well, you mix down to the IF, then you limit your IF, so it's a limiter. It's going to be a limiter, yeah. So, antenna? Yeah. Can't be the amplifier, can't be the filter. Well, you know that the mixer uh, creates your intermediate frequency, and then after that you want to amplify it. 
so you're going back this way, right? Mm -hmm. Same with filter. So it's not going to be a radio frequency amplifier because you don't have radio frequency. Well, you have an amplifier. So the mixture creates. No, it, this so is you're saying the limiter? A limiter, no doubts about that. The limiter cuts the signal. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, see who see who loses their license on this one. The thing I don't like about that question nope. is oh, 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 right Peter, it's just something that one black mark for Peter. Always filter. Yes. Oh, taking his license away. Yes, but ah. I was thinking too, the filter actually, but I didn't say. Anything. I thought it was either one or the other. Yeah. The limiter is, in, is before the modulator, isn't it? Uh, this is very disputable. Because if you don't limit it, you, you, you over deviate. The filter is distributed stage by stage by stage. Uh, the, the ceramic mm -hmm. yeah. Filters between. Somebody's got the block diagram. Yeah. yeah. The only thing you can do there on that is the filter. Page fourteen. So there's there's usually a tune. There's usually a tune circuit uh, at the input of of every mix to make sure that only the frequency that you want is getting in there. Yeah, we have the mixer now. Mixer in the mixer. No, we're coming into the mixer. Oh, oh, oh sorry. This is oh, between the mixer and the emitter. Oh, okay, right. Between the mixer and the emitter. Yeah, it has to be a filter. Of course. It's a tune circuit. You have okay. to get rid of the harmonics. Okay. Yeah, it's a filter. Because after you do all your mixing, remember, remember I, I told you, whenever you mix frequencies, you get the sum, the difference, and two originals? Well, you're already mixing two frequencies, so you're going to get the sum, the difference, and two originals uh, for both sets of frequencies you put in there. So that's eight frequencies that could be bouncing around inside the thing, and you only want one of them to get into the into the next stage. So you got to you got to block them somehow. So you got to filter. So you have a tuned resonant circuit at the output, a tank coil, basically, that only passes the, that one frequency of all the ones that were created in your mixer to go, to go on to the amplifier. I do not like that question at all because mm -hmm. the inter -frequen intermediate frequency amplifier itself is a filter which will do the job. In modern receivers it's uh, had become common practice to put a roofing filter in that particular mm -hmm. location. So yeah. you know the answer is perfectly correct no, we're talking. But it's only conditionally correct. We're talking about uh, at a block level. Block the, the am, and so the intermediate frequency amplifier is just an amplifier in this case. It is also a filter. Only if it's been built as a module with a filter incorporated, which they are, which they know, which they are typically now. But if you were building one from scratch, you have to create a filter with it. Or it wouldn't work. I don't care how you do it, it's a filter. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think uh, to end this um, discussion, I think we should break yeah, and have break. coffee. And don't forget the donuts, you <coughs> get two each.